Greetings, traveler. Let's start reviewing, baby. We're just gonna do it in order they appeared here. Uh, we got here. No rarities? No. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly that's going to be. Freezing sap? Oh god, freezing sap, man. I noticed you had no hex. We skipped the hex for unstable evolution and I have not regretted it because we got a crushing hand. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So, first card here, Temporal Anomaly. Two minute, two, two, when you draw this card, add a random spell to your hand from your class. So you don't even need to play it to get the effect. So we can compare this to something like a Swashburglar, something like a Blink Fox, where you get a random spell. Um, whereas this is probably even better because Blink Fox and Swashburglar... Well, okay, so it's not better in terms of stats because I think one mana, one, one, fine-ish for that effect. Three mana, three, three, definitely fine for that effect. Two mana, two, two, sure, right? But like two mana, two, twos are just so prone to getting killed for free. Um, if you have it in your opening hand, you don't get the effect. Aha, yeah, that's true. We can think about that, that's true. So you, hmm, yeah, so it's like a blink fox you can't keep. I still think it's good, right? But you need to just... You need to just hope you don't draw it. But no, that is a real downside. If it's in your opening hand, it doesn't proc. That's good to think about. See, that's why I like doing these live, right? Because you guys always catch things I miss. Uh, yeah, okay, that is a real downside. So I would say worse than the Blink Fox, for sure. Worse than a Swash Burglar. But it's still, you know, it's still something that makes your deck more flexible. And if you draw it in a mid game, you don't hate it. So... But yeah, yeah, definitely. So looks like it's going to be worse than those cards. All right, moving on. The Blessing of Aeons. Give a minion at the, at the end of your turn. Ooh, that is important. Give a minion at the end of your turn, game plus one plus one. So what we have here is one mana, I give your minion plus one plus one, but you can't trade with it first, right? So there is that limitation. But it is a win con as in, you know, let's say you have a Tar Creeper protecting a minion, and then you put this on the other minion. It, uh, it just keeps getting, uh, it keeps getting stronger. If it were at the start of the turn, I wouldn't really like the card. At the end of the turn, it can actually give you a win con. So this looks, um, this looks pretty decent as well. Probably, probably something you want to pick in a more low curve aggressive Paladin, right? And then you just put it on there. It's way better than Blink Fox but you can't keep it in your opening hand, right? It's almost Gruul on a stick. Well, no, on a stick would mean, like Gruul is Gruul on a stick, because Gruul is the stick. This has no stick, right? All right, next one is the, and we, I can go over them and then we will, uh, we'll circle back, right? We can go over them and go over them with your comments as well. Next one is the Master of Realities. After you summon a minion, transform it into a random minion that costs two more. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is look at the stats of the minion because obviously the effect sounds pretty good, right? Anything you play immediately gets Evolve Evolve cast on it, right? Uh, this one is a six mana five seven. Comparable to Bullifist Ogre, which is a six mana. Uh, oh, so, oh my God, it's summon. You're right. Holy shit. <laughs> what? No, man. Okay. I'll, I'll explain why that matters. <laughs> so first of all, the, the body is super decent, right? This is a Defias Cleaner, if you guys remember that card. That card was drafted for its effect, of course, but very often you just picked it for like, eh, it's a body, it's a Vax Flame Strike, it can push with it. But the text indicates that it works on totems, right? Your hero power becomes summon a three drop. If you, you know, like before you would have call in the finishers, right? The summon, summon tokens, like uh, you can use feral spirits, you can use chain gang, oh my God. God, Chain Gang is so disgusting with the... What? No, that's too strong, man. What the fuck? Okay, I can see why Advoked has taken a break. My God, 
And I'm at card three. Oh man, what 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 lies ahead, guys? What lies ahead? Oh my god. Oh, that is insane. Okay. Well, yeah, that is insane. Next card is Flash Forward. Each player gets two mana crystals, draws two cards. Uh, we've seen this in the past, right? And it's always like kind of a meh thing. Like you look you look at the effect and you're like, wow, two mana crystals, two cards, but your opponent gets it too, so then what's the point? You're the one spending a card doing it, so unless chat has a, unless chat has a valid reason why this card isn't um, bad, then let me know. But for now, I'm a not like this one. At least not, you know, if, if next to Master of Realities, right? All right, so, okay. <laughs> this is the one, this is the one people are gonna have fun with, right? So, seven mana, six, six. So that's not good, but that is playable. As in, you know, you play it, it's a big boy, it's a Varys Flame Strike, you know, various other AOEs. Um, the battle cry says, from now on, your turns... This is great, right? Because because it's a battle cry, it persists. Your turns are 15 seconds and you draw to... Wait, does this... It's not for the opponent as well. Can you guys elaborate a bit? Because if this is what I think it is, that's insane. What? It's... What? How does it not... Oh, how can they print that shit? Are you fucking kidding me? What? I thought the opponent would get two extra cards as well. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, let's just print some cards then, huh? Looks like it's not gonna matter. Let's break the rules of the game, right? Cards aren't that important in a card game, right, guys? Let's draw two cards. Wait, two extra cards. So you get three cards a turn. Okay, so we've seen a Luneth. I'm just saying, right? We've seen a Luneth. A Luneth is three, though. That matters. So I think for this card, for this card, we need the math, as in how often this shit is going to burn you. So that is, that's the most important thing, because if this, on average, does not burn you, right, a lot, then it's absolutely insane. It's absolutely batshit crazy, right? So, and just the fact that you don't detempo yourself as much as with Alunath. Aluna draws four a turn? Well, I mean, this draws three if Aluna draws four, right? But yeah, no, no, I think, oh my God, that's insane. I'm not looking forward to that. I mean, come on. Let's be reasonable here, right? This is this is three weeks. Oh my god, okay, well... How many cards are we in? Alright, so we're five cards in and my mind is broken. Okay. I thought that Master of Realities was gonna be like the bomb, but even though this card is amazing, even though this card is amazing, doesn't really compare to Murazant. All right, well, moving on. Oh my god, dude, what the f... Uh, but Death Knights are too strong. I know, right? And then they do this shit. Oh my god. You draw three cards a turn, man, which I still can't... Uh, I can't process it. Okay. Possibility Seeker. Four mana, four, five, a dragon. Shuffle your hand into your deck. Draw that many cards. Okay, let me actually update the title first that we are reviewing. So I need to look at this one for a moment. I, I think the baseline is good, right? The baseline is good. It's probably great, but the baseline is good. In most other card games, reshuffling your hand and drawing that many cards is a good effect, right? So... I'm just looking at Hearthstone, how often you're going to keep cards you want. I think it's great, right? Yeah, it feels like it is great, the Possibility Seeker, because it's a Yeti. And I think the effect is definitely desirable. So, yep, Possibility Seeker looks great. All right, Harbinger of Catastrophe. Oh man, that name, okay. 
Six mana six seven. At the start of your turn, summon the highest cost minion from each player's deck. So the stats are Bull Fist Ogre. That alone indicates that it's probably going to be a good card. But then, how does this work? You summon your highest cost card, they summon their highest cost card, which means they're going to be able to attack with their highest cost card and probably kill your Harbinger for free. Eh. We've seen those effects, right? Okay, so I guess this is a bit deck dependent. It, okay, so one of the biggest things is we need to know how likely it is that um, how likely it is that we uh, we're gonna see these cards because if you're going to consistently be able to draft them, which I assume they're going to do because it's an effect because it's an event, then it's um, you can build a deck around this, right? Because you can pick a Tyrantus and you can pick an Ultrasaur, right? <laughs> if you have like three of these, like if these are common and you can pick, and you pick three of these, you can reliably like, you know, put two Ultrasaurs in your deck. And you can maybe even draft a Possibility Seeker to shuffle that Ultrasaur back into, oh man, the things, the memes, the memes. Okay. Because you get to control your draft, right? Okay, so I guess it's not for every draft, but we'll have to see. Reminiscence? Reminisce? Reminisce? I guess reminisce. Add two random cards your opponent played this game to your hand. Oh my god. So, I'm not sure if I like that more than Thought Steal. It is cheaper, but at the same time, it means that you're going to, by default, have all the very... Um, by default, you're going to have all the very cheap minions in there as well. Nah, probably not. I don't think I like this. I don't think I like this because I think the whole point of drafting these kind of cards is going for big value. And you're going to have to hold this thing for a very long time if you want on average to get good cards, right? So I don't think this is good. Infinite Wolf. Okay, this is one of the more difficult ones, right? Uh, Formula 5-5. Five, five. Like the, the first time you read this, you think it's absolutely batshit crazy, right? And it still might be, but let's have a look. It's a Formula 5-5, five, five. Rush. After this attacks, shuffle it in your deck and give future infinite wolves plus two plus two. So the problem with this is it can never go face, right? Because, well, I mean, it can go face, right? But you'd have to rush it, not attack, wait a turn, then uh, you get to attack with it. So you can't attack a minion with it because then it'll shuffle itself back. So it attacks, it gets plus two plus two and get, then gets shuffled in your deck. So it's kind of like, you know, you have a you have a militia commander where you attack something, but then the militia commander doesn't stay on the board. That's kind of the point. So the first time you cast this thing, it's like a four mana lava burst that can't go face, right? Four mana lava burst that can't go face. And then you shuffle it back into your deck. And then it can take a while until you see the next one. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean that that effect alone isn't like playable at all, right? Like you get to deal five damage to something for four mana. And you can also put it on the board and just not attack with it and have a four mana five five with which you can attack once. So that is abusable, of course. Your opponent can put a taunt in the way and all that. If you draft two or three of these in one deck, <laughs> what if it dies? I assume it doesn't get shuffled then, but maybe it does, but I don't think so. Okay, so this is a card I'm gonna have to play with. I think it's like not as insane as most people say just because they forget that it gets removed from the board. So if this thing would stay on the board and have the effect, my god, that's broken, right? Absolutely broken. Yeah, but I... Okay, so you get like a 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. So you get a 4 mana Devil Sar. Yeah, well, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. Like you have a 4 mana Devil Sar, which after it attacks, it doesn't even sap itself. It puts itself in the deck. Huh. 
Huh. Okay. I don't know. I think most people are going to overrate it a little bit, the infinite wolf. I think you're going to find that it's very annoying having to shuffle the wolf into your deck over and over and over again. Yeah. Okay. But we'll have to test it. All right, next one. Timeline Witness. Three mana, two, four. Instead of drawing your normal card each turn, discover a card from your deck. So that is way better than drawing for anyone that was wondering. Because you get to decide from three cards rather than accept whatever the top of your deck has to offer. The stats are slightly underwhelming, but you're usually going to get at least one trigger off this. Hmm. So it's like you get a free tracking, right? You get one free tracking, and then if you can protect it, you have a track every turn. This combos with shuffle your hand into your deck card. Well, it doesn't, right? I mean, as in, you shuffle your hand into your deck, but not on every draw you get to track, right? Because it says instead of drawing your normal card each turn. On um, one side note, usually discover does not take it out of your deck. Oh, you're right. Hmm, yeah, so you don't thin your deck at the same time. That might be okay, it depends a bit, right? I thought it's when you draw a card. Oh my god, yeah, that'd be, that'd be, that would be insane. That would be insane. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's crazy, crazy timeline witness. But cool, cool card. Thief of Futures, 4 mana 4 3, battle cry, add a copy of the top card of your opponent's deck. Oh! Dude, another what the fuck card, man. What? You can't just do that? What? I mean, what the hell? I think this 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 might go a bit underappreciated when people are browsing through the cards. Right? Because you have all these flashy effects and all this, but this is a four mana four three to begin with, right? Blink Fox is amazing, right? This is a Formula 4-3, which doesn't give you a random card. It gives you a card your opponent drafted to begin with, right? So the stats are better, a lot better. 4-3 or 3-3 is a huge difference. It gives you a better card on average, and it tells you which card the opponent is going to draw. So he knows which card you have, you know which card he has. Funny enough, if you play the card you steal, your opponent knows what he's going to draw. But, oh my god. Oh my god, that's insane. Oh, it's... Oh, I thought it was a 3-drop. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Not as good as I thought. Oh my god, okay. Eh. Still good. Not broken, but still good. <laughs> I thought it was 3 mana. I honestly thought... Okay, chat. Stop bullying me. We're moving on. I'm going to forget that ever happens. Nah, 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 nah. All right. Wildlands Adventure, <laughs> five mana five five. Battle cry, add a random card from the Hall of Fame to your hand. Okay, so now we need to see Hall of Fame, right? It's a five mana five five. That makes it a good card, right? It's not a bad card. What I mean is, I don't like that it's so insanely swingy. You either get a, uh, you either get a completely useless card or you get a Sylvanas, right? <sighs> It's a good card. It's a good card. It's just, yeah, meh. All right, Rift Warden, 7 out of 5-5. Five, five. Battle Cry, discard a random minion, Death Rattle, summon it. So you're paying 7 mana for a 5-5. Five, five. You're discarding one of the cards in your hand. It's vulnerable to silence. After it dies, summon the minion you discarded. That's pretty high tempo when you get, like, a good discard. Hmm. Don't think I like it. But that's, I don't know. It's possible that it's okay. I'll have to play this card. This is one of the cards I need to play, honestly. It does, it, I don't think it fits with the overpoweredness we've seen so far, right? Other than that, yeah. I'll need to, I'll need to play with it though. I'll need to play with it. Deja Vu, one mana, discover a copy of a spell you played this game. Uh, that also doesn't feel too great, right? This is Warlock, right? Or what is it? Or is that Rogue? God, I don't know the colors. No, that's not Warlock. That's Rogue. Yeah. I've only been playing this game for a couple years, guys. Come on. It's a Rouge. So, okay, in Rogue. 
Hmm. Meh. Meh. I don't know. The thing is you... It's like hallucination, but you don't get more options, right? You get something you drafted already. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna need to... I'm gonna need to try it, to be fair. All right. Consider the past. Add three random spells from the past to your hand. So Kabbalah's Tome for four, but you can't hit Fireball, you can't hit Poly. Okay, so let's have a look, right? To properly have a look at this. Can I filter on all of them? Maybe I can just do Wild, right? No, not Wild, eh. All right, whatever. Um, oh wait, it's not just Mage, right? It doesn't specify Mage spells. Oh God, dear Lord, I have no fucking idea then. That's too much math. We'll leave that up to Stein. <laughs> we'll leave that up to Stein. That's too much math for me. All right. Bronze Brood Mother. Five and a five five. When you draw this, summon a one one Wee Whelp. Okay. So it's a five and a five five, and the effects. I think this is one of the lesser like crazy cards, but just solid, right? Five and a five five, but upside. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Cavern Dreamer, Mage Minion. At the end of your turn, add a random spell that costs two or less to your hand. So it's understated, but you play it and you guaranteed get a spell to your hand. Oh my God, you can get unstable evolution with this shit, right? And then if they don't kill it, you get another one. Wow, damn. I can see value mage becoming a thing, right? You just draft this, you draft this, you pick Flame Strike, you pick Meteor, you pick Blizzard, and you just sit back and let the value engine work for you. My god. All right. Chromie, shuffle four historical epochs or epochs into your deck. We need to know these things, right, before we can rate her. Uh, does anyone have a link for the epochs or epochs? I'll, I'll review the next card and then we'll... Oh, looks like I already have one. Hey, thank you for that. Okay. They're all four mana. Uh, can we can we unban people that run into the bot, please? If there's a... Yeah, thank you, Tara. Okay, so opening the dark portal. Add two random legendary minions to your hand. Draw a card. Cast this when drawn. Oh my god. So we don't know which one she shuffles in or or she shuffles all of them in. Oh my god. Okay. So she shuffles all of them in there. And I'm assuming all four of them, not just random. Oh my god. Okay. So two legendary minions for free. Uh... Battle for Mount Hyjal. Give your minions plus two plus two. Draw. Oh, draw a card every time as well. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Ooh. What? What? But no, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, you can't just do that. All right. Escape from Durnhold. Uh, oh man, like if you played WoW, this is a throwback though, right? Yeah. Add two random spells to your hand, draw a card, cast a spell drawn, deal two damage to all enemies. Oh my god. Oh my god. This might be worse than Faldore. Mm. Well, Faldore is really good, right? But. This is definitely worse than Faldore in terms of worse to play against because at least 4 fours, you know that's gonna happen, but the two damage might be insane when it hits, right? The plus two plus two might be insane when it hits. Giving the legendary minions might be insane if it's good, right? So, yeah. Why would it cost mana when the mana cost is not relevant? It's for when you, like, let's say you probe into it, right? It needs to have a mana cost for that reason. I don't think it will cost mana. Because let's say you coin, innovate, innovate, chromie, and then draw it. 
what's the game going to do then? You don't have enough mana to cast it, right? So there needs to be a cost, but it will be free, I would assume. It's kind of like Deck of Wonders, right? The scrolls also have a mana cost on them, but they don't cost you anything. You think you have to pay for mana? Well, look at the wording on Scroll of Wonders, right? Okay, that's insane. Holy shit. This is a neutral, yep. The thing is, you expect Chromie to be, you know, an insane legendary card that you would almost never see, but there's no rare, there's no rarity here. My god. Also, what if you draw it during the opponent's turn? Yeah, there's too many restrictions on you having to pay the mana for Hearthstone. It'll be free. It'll be free. Okay, so next one. Stasis Dragon. Starts dormant. This awakens with Rush after two turns. So, just to get it right. You play six mana ten ten dormant. Pass. Turn one. Pass. Turn two. You have it on turn eight, right? So turn 8, you get a 10-10 rush, but you need to skip your turn 6 for it. I can see it for like my Control Shaman, for instance, where sometimes you need to um, just dump mana. But I can see it being a bit weird. Also, your opponent gets to plan for it, right? He gets to put a Gastropod in the way. He gets to... Uh, your opponent gets to plan for it. That's That's the main thing, right? So I would say for my Control Shaman, it'd be good because sometimes I just need to... <clears throat> sometimes I need to just dump my mana, but I think for most decks it's not really eh, right? It's a bit eh. All right. Fate Cleaver, 4 mana 4, 2. After this kills a minion, destroy all copies of it. So on the board, in your hand, in your deck for both players. I assume. 4 mana 4 2. Eh. At first glance, this feels kind of eh. Like it's a weapon, right? But unless chat can enlighten me, it feels a little eh. Next one is Ripple in Time. Discover a minion. If you play it this turn, it has Echo. So 1 mana discover a minion. Let's start with that first, right? 1 mana discover a minion. So. That would be like Raven Idol with the restriction that you can't pick a spell. So that doesn't sound great. But then the minion has Echo. Which means that if you... Ah, the problem is you can't cast it early because then the Echo effect disappears. So it's something you want to cast in the very late game. So you can get... Like what would be a good hit of this? Like uh, Oracle... Loot Hoarder, right? Three Stone Hills in one turn. Yeah, but that's all this, I don't know. I feel like it's a bit too restrictive. Doesn't seem great, right? Doesn't seem great. I'm also just comparing it to all the crazy stuff we've seen, right? We've just seen all the crazy stuff, so I don't know. It feels too restrictive. That's my first impression. It feels too restrictive. Okay, Draconid Herald. No, Draconic. Draconic Herald. Six mana, five, six. Battlecry, discover a minion. Give it plus three, plus three, and then put it on the top of your deck. Okay. So stats. Not quite as good as what we've seen because of the six health, not seven health. But you get to control your next draw, and the draw will be bigger. That looks powerful. I don't think it's crazy, crazy batshit crazy from what we've seen. I'm just comparing these two cards we've seen already, right? But then your opponent might... Yeah, then your opponent can play the, the Infinite Thief, right? Yeah. Or not Infinite Thief or whatever. Thief of Future, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good card. Feels like a good card. Not crazy, but you'll pick it, I think. Just because it's a bit understated, right? But then your next draw is big. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Infinite Murloc, Battle Cry, shuffle an infinite Murloc in your deck. Your future infinite Murlocs get full summon. I, I don't have... Uh, I find it hard to rate these cards because it takes so long for that engine to go and 
do you really want to draw two mana two two after that? Do you really want to draw three mana three three after that? No, not three mana three three, but do you really want to draw two two a three three a four four? Right? Like it takes so long for them to start to become decent, right? So nah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say nay to the infinite murloc because you don't really want to put the uh, two two or three three on your deck, even if it's one mana, right? Because by the time you draw the one mana four four. It's like, what, turn 12, turn 14? Do you really want to draw 4-4, four, four? right? Not really. You never fatigue? Eh, eh. All right, Stasis Elemental, battle cry, freeze a minion until this leaves the battlefield. What? Dude, I like this though. They're, they're taking some elements from like MTG and other card games, because this is, this is an effect that we didn't have yet, right? This is probably something they're going to test with <clears throat> to have something uh, similar for a card they're you know, going to properly design. This is, this is just strong, right? This is just super strong. A 4 mana 3-5 with a regular freeze? Because you pay, you pay 6 mana for a 5-5 five five freeze and that is a good card. This is a formula 3-5, which is, granted, these days a little underwhelming. You don't really want formula 3-5s anymore. Sengens tend to just get killed for free and all that. But if it has the freeze effect, that's great. If it freezes until this thing dies, that's insane, right? Where does the silence work? I'm assuming if you silence your minion, it'll work. If you silence this, I don't think it'll work. I think the effect is on the other minion. But yeah, this is insane. I have been spoiled a little bit on this one, but still. What the fuck? Okay. Chrono Shot. Return an enemy minion to your opponent's hand. It costs two more. So Freezing Trap is a really good card. You might see it a little less now because it's in the top bucket and you basically have to choose like, you know, do I want the bow or do you want trap? Do you want high main? Do you want trap? But the big downside of freezing trap is that you can't decide whether your opponent's going to attack with it or not. This thing you choose for only one mana more. That's just... Oh my god. That's going to be so toxic to play against and so fun to play with you're just going to you're just going to shoot shit out of the way we're definitely going to be playing some hunter boys because remember when they did the previous event and blazing longsword was a card warrior was just number one now granted there were some other things in place but a big part of that was blazing longsword so i can see the same thing happening for hunter whereas like well they have a lot of chrono shots I guess the class is insane. I'll take my coaching session and once you figure this meta out. Honestly, I'm not sure if I can coach people in good, con good conscience during this clan fiesta. I might just postpone coaching sessions until we have real arena, right? Because what am I going to coach you in, right? Yeah, draw the really good card. Yeah, good job, my man. Yeah, now use the really good card. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it. Because that's kind of the point. They can blatantly... They, they don't really have to care for balance when they make this because it's only going to be in the game for three weeks. So there are going to be some insanely unbalanced cards in here. So it's kind of not the... It's, it's really like whatever, right? Timeway Wander. We're just going to move on. 5 mana 6-3, Battle Cry, discover a spell, reduce its cost by 5, and then put it on your deck. All right, so let's see. It's not great for value because you don't put it in your hand. We remember Ethereal Conjurer, which was really good at the same stats. Put the spell in your hand. Now, the thing here is that the cost is reduced by five. So you're probably not going to want to play this in, um, in every class, but I can see this being ridiculous in Mage where you play it and you put a 1 mana Meteor on top of your deck. You put a 5 mana UI on top of your deck. You put a 0 mana Volcano on top of your deck. Shaman's probably not the best example because 
that's a lot of cheap spells due to the overload. Rogue, probably the same thing. So I would say I would just say look at the classes and look at the costs, right? I can see it in Mage, I can see it in Druid. One mana spreading plague, zero mana starfall. Still doesn't feel crazy, more just annoying, right? That your opponent will get that tempo swing. Because you definitely detempo yourself by playing a five mana three health minion. But you get to pick the tempo back up later with the spell. Mind control, yes, in priest. Oh lord, in priest. Scream, mind control, holy fire, eh, holy fire is whatever, but amber. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, grasp the future. Draw two cards, they cost two less. That seems good, right? I'm just thinking back up Lunar Visions. Lunar Visions was five mana instead of four and only procced when you hit minions. This is one mana cheaper and always works. That seems really good. Like these cards are always a little difficult because you need to like see it in action, but it seems really good. It's in Warlock though, so yeah, obviously you have a tap, but still. Zero mana draw two, not quite, because first of all, you can hit things that are, you know, one mana. Second of all, you can hit things that you don't want to play for another seven turns, which means that the mana you spend is awkward, right? But yeah, we'll see. Time-bound giant costs one less for each card you've drawn. Oh god, so how does that work, chat? Help me out here. Turn one, you draw one card. So by turn... when is it playable? Turn eight or so? It's seven cost on turn eight. So it's a seven mana eight eight. And then it's six mana eight eight. So on turn eight, you get to play this for six and your hero power. Okay. And you can make it cheaper with all the card draw effects. Oh, with the guy that shuffles your hand into your deck and draw, my god. Oh my god, that's insane, right? You have a couple of those yetis and you play giant? That's pretty insane. Oh my god. Yep. That's pretty sick. You can keep it in the opener. Oh, you can't keep it, okay. I was like, eh, I'm not sure for that. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Damn, sick. So for people who want to see that themselves, use exclamation mark TOT. That's for Taverns of Time. That's going to be the name of the event. It's going to be live in five days. In five days, we'll have we'll get the uh, we'll get the crazy crazy cards here. But yeah, my God, hmm. seems insane.